Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is to wherever you're at. 91 Cab GT coming at you again. This time with a video, it's a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Um, kind of more of a discussion video. Like, this one's about fuel economy. Now, with everything going on in the world right now, with gas prices rising, with all of that, with the inflation, everything like that, people's budgets are starting to get, no, they already are very tight. <laughs> There's no starting about it. People's budgets are very tight, and they're only going to get worse. <clears throat> so, I have, over about the last 20 years, been playing around with fuel economy. What can you do to get better fuel economy? What works? What doesn't work? And so I've tried a lot of different stuff out there. <clears throat> so, excuse me, allergies in the air going on, and I don't edit my, edit my videos, so sorry. This is how it's going to be. <laughs> okay, so the main point of this video is how do you get better fuel economy in your vehicle? So, let's start. First thing I wanted to go over are devices that are out there. You've seen them, uh, the little magnets that clip onto your fuel line, uh, the little devices that splice into your computer, um, all kinds of little stuff like that. There, there's even HHO for those that do and don't know what it's about. Just do a quick search if you don't know what it's about. If you do wanna know what it's about, I've done it before. Um, it, on paper, it's mathematically impossible for it to improve your fuel economy unless you make the hydrogen and oxygen outside of the vehicle through a different power source and then bring it into the vehicle, but then you're carrying hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> Not a very good combination. Not say no, no. Uh -uh. So for the most part, all those little devices and everything, the only thing they really help as far as with fuel economy is they make your wallet lighter. That's about it. <clears throat> um, they really don't help. So it's not, not worth it to waste any money on that. As far as tuning... Uh, a lot of vehicles now, you can actually tune them and program them differently than what they came from the factory. And in some cases, that does help, especially if it's a diesel engine. However, if it's a gas engine, you're really not going to get much. You may get a very small amount, but for the price of the tune compared to the fuel that you're going to save, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You can save so much more money by changing how you drive instead of trying to make the vehicle more efficient how you want to drive. So <clears throat> it's a big difference there. You really just have to come to the point where, okay, with how gas prices are going up and with the price of gas currently is it a motivation a, a motivating factor to change your driving style to change your driving habits you can actually save quite a bit of money by doing that but it's all up to you if you don't want to change how you're driving your driving style you're not going to save fuel point blank I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, um, so with that said, each vehicle that's out there is going to be different. So, what works for one vehicle won't necessarily always work for another vehicle. And I know it's really frustrating for those that don't know how to get good fuel economy because what works for you in one vehicle might not work in another. And that's just the nature of the beast. Some vehicles are more aerodynamic than others. So some of them, you're going to get better fuel economy actually at a faster speed. 
counterintuitive there, I know. Some vehicles, you're going to get a lot better fuel economy at lower speeds. It all is based on the engine, the transmission, the tires, the final driver ratio. I mean, there's so many different factors that come in to play on that. Sasha, go lay down. Sorry, guys. Got a needy dog over here. <clears throat> so a lot of vehicles nowadays have instant fuel economy readouts where you can actually put that on the screen and it shows you in real time immediately what fuel economy you're getting. And, and it's really good to put that up on the screen when you're learning because then you can actually see real time how your driving really changes the fuel economy and what works and what doesn't, what speed is best, all of that stuff. If it has a real-time readout, if your vehicle does not have a real-time readout, a lot of times you can get a OBD2 diagnostic reader off of your favorite online store that plugs into your diagnostic port. Every vehicle from 96 to newer has an OBD2 diagnostic port. A lot of these code readers will also give you real-time data like fuel economy, fuel consumption. Uh, some of them you can pair to your smartphone and then you can see in real time what is going on. You can also scan if you have a trouble code. If your en check engine light pops up, you can see, okay, this is what the code is. You can take that code, you can go and pull it up online and you can see, okay, you can get a good idea on what's going on with your vehicle. It's just a good thing to have. But anyway, so every vehicle is going to be different. And you're going to have to play around to find out what works for your vehicle. So let's do some things that are universal for all vehicles, like warming up your engine. If you start your engine on a cold morning, don't sit there and let it warm up 5, 10, 15 minutes before you take off driving. Start your engine up. <clears throat> as soon as the oil pressure is showing, start driving. Now that goes completely opposite of what a lot of us were taught whenever we were younger. Now with a carbureted vehicle, a lot of times, it did help to let the vehicle warm up because it just didn't run good at all whenever it was cold. Well, all the vehicles out there now for the past 30 years are fuel injected. They run just as fine when it's cold as it does when it's hot. If, it, if you have a fuel injected vehicle and it's running bad when it's cold, something is wrong. You need to fix it. Then you'll, then you'll get better fuel economy. But yeah, go out there, start the car up, put it in drive. Now, don't floor it. That's stupid. Don't do that. Be nice on the engine until it gets warmed up. But by putting the motor under a load, it's going to warm up a lot faster. So it will not use as much fuel as just sitting there at idle. Because that really doesn't load up the engine, and it takes a little while for the engine to warm up that way. So when you come to a stop sign, a red light, whatever, and it's time to go, despite what you might think, don't baby the gas. Don't just barely touch on it and go. You do want to accelerate briskly, not flooring it. Don't go beyond you know, half throttle, something like that. But it, once again, it's going to vary depending on the vehicle. But you're going to want to get up to speed in a timely fashion. The longer you spend slowly accelerating, you're not getting good gas mileage when you're accelerating. Regardless of how fast or slow you are accelerating, you're getting bad fuel economy when you are accelerating. So you want to minimize that time that you are getting bad fuel economy by getting up to speed. Now, if you floor it, the engine is going to inject more fuel, so you're going to get even worse fuel economy. Don't floor it. Get onto it, 
accelerate briskly, but it's not a race. So, <clears throat> page two. <laughs> Um, when you are trying to get good fuel economy, um, to an extent, ignore what's going on back behind you. If you let people behind you pressure you, A, now your focus is behind you instead of in front of you, so that's dangerous, but B, now they are determining if you're getting good fuel economy or not. Don't do that. Pay attention to what's in front of you, primarily. Unless you see blue and red flashing lights, and then, yeah, you gotta pay attention. You know? Or spend some time in the jail, you know. That's your choice. <laughs> um, if you're on a, a two-lane road, or if you're... if if Hold on, let me back up a little bit. If you're out on the highway and there's two lanes going in your direction, don't go in the fast lane. Don't go in the fast lane. If you're trying to get good fuel economy, stay in the right lane. If you do have to pass somebody, get around them and move back over again. Don't ride in the left lane. In Texas, it's actually against the law to cruise in the left lane. There's signs all over the place that say left lane for passing only it's a law technically you can get pulled over if you're just cruising in the fast lane and you can get a ticket for it so be considerate when you're trying to get good fuel economy to other people that doesn't mean let them bully you into driving faster that means if you're on a little country road and there is a paved shoulder don't put yourself in harm's way. Don't try to pull over before a bridge to let the person pass. Don't pull over as you're going uphill where you can't see far enough ahead to let them pass. Do it safely, but be courteous. Uh, excuse me. Lunch. <laughs> um, if you can see a good ways ahead and it's safe to do so, let them go on around. Uh, be courteous to other people. But, like I say, at the same time, don't let them bully you and try to force you to drive faster. If they're in such a hurry, they can find a way to get around. That's their problem, not yours. <clears throat> they're paying for you, their gas. You're paying for your gas. So... Um, the brake pedal is not your friend when you're trying to get good fuel economy. The more you're on that brake pedal, the more you're wasting gas that you use to get up to speed. So if you're driving through town and say a quarter of a mile ahead, you see a red light. Start easing off on that accelerator pedal. <laughs> Ease off on the gas pedal. Slow down a little bit. If you are actually going downhill and you see a stoplight up ahead, go ahead and just let off the gas completely. Just coast. Take it easy. Once again, it's not a race. Um, <clears throat> the more you use the brake pedal, the more fuel you're actually wasting. Um, yes, if you drive a hybrid, hybrids can recoup some of that lost energy back into the battery. But it's not a 100% efficient conversion. So even in a hybrid, you still want to try to avoid using the brakes, if at all possible. Uh, once again, be courteous to other people. Let them go around, but don't let them control how you drive. <clears throat> Drafting. <laughs> Mythbusters did an episode on drafting. 
And what they found was actually really interesting. Really interesting. At least I felt so anyway. Um, you can be quite a ways away from, say, an 18-wheeler on the highway. And you can get benefits from drafting. You don't have to be bumper to bumper to an 18-wheeler in order to gain fuel economy. You really don't want to be that close to an 18-wheeler. You don't want to be one or two car lengths away from an 18-wheeler. That's, that's getting to the point where it's very dangerous. Not only can you not see what's going on ahead, but 18-wheelers, they really can't swerve. And as the temperatures start to increase, or in Texas, you, it can be a hot day any time of the year. Hot days, you end up with a lot more vehicles blowing tires. So you end up with big, large chunks of tires on the road. And a lot of times, 18-wheelers do run over those. And if you are right back behind an 18-wheeler and it kicks up a big tire tread, it can do some major damage to your car. Major damage. You want to be far enough away from an 18-wheeler where it's safe. Where you can have enough of an opportunity to get out of the way if you have to. While at the same time, still taking advantage of the draft. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Mythbusters also found that if you are extremely close to a, an 18-wheeler while you're drafting, your gas mileage actually drops. And that's primarily because it's very difficult to maintain a very, very small gap between a vehicle and an 18-wheeler. So you're constantly adjusting that gas pedal one way or another in order to try to stay as close as you can. So you don't want to stay. Be safe about it. Um, you can be several, several car lengths back, several car lengths back, and still have an increase in fuel economy from drafting without putting yourself and others in danger. Uh, cold front moved through, so animals are going crazy right now. <laughs> when you are on a highway... <clears throat> um, if the speed limit changes or if somebody pulls out of the way and you go to accelerate, if, if for any reason you need to accelerate, try to use gravity to your advantage. Accelerate going downhill. Then you don't use as much gas to accelerate because you're using gravity to help you. If you're on a flat level road, just maintain speed maintain speed if you're on a flat level road and you see a hill coming up sometimes you can slowly but surely gain just a little bit of speed and then once you get to that hill allow your speed to slowly start dropping you don't want to work against gravity you don't want to have to accelerate when you're going uphill because now you're not only having to accelerate the vehicle but now you're also having to work against gravity so use gravity to your advantage <clears throat> page three <laughs> don't top off your gas tank um, and what I mean by that is when you are filling up your vehicle if it clicks off don't keep putting more and more gas in there. Don't pull it out and look to, and just completely top off your fuel. Cars have something called a charcoal canister. This is basically a little canister that is between your fuel tank and the engine. And there is a vacuum line that goes from your fuel tank through the charcoal canister into the engine. And a lot of times there's valves and other things, miscellaneous things on there too. This is so that way any fuel vapors that from your fuel tank, from heat changing, you know, getting warmer, colder, whatever, yada, 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 it gets burned off. The problem comes if you top off your fuel tank, 
raw fuel can go into the charcoal canister. That charcoal canister is not designed to handle raw fuel. It is designed to handle vapors. When you put raw fuel in there, you can end up having a check engine light. Um, the vehicle can start running bad. It can actually end up causing you to get worse fuel economy. So for the most part, when you're, feel, when you're filling up, unless you're in a hurry, barely have the fuel tank, barely have the, the pump running as far as putting fuel in your vehicle. Try it sometime. <clears throat> have the fuel handle sque squeezed all the way. Top off your car. Wait 30 seconds. Squeeze it one more time, fully. See what it clicks off at, okay? When you put fuel in really fast, it's frothy and it bubbles up and it shuts off the fuel pump pretty quickly. And it doesn't always get your fuel tank all the way full. Now try the same thing again with it barely running. Fill up your tank until it clicks off. Wait 30 seconds, squeeze it all the way. It's gonna shut off almost immediately because now the fuel level is a lot higher. So when you put fuel in the tank, if you're trying to get as much fuel in there as possible, don't hammer it in there. Don't try to force it in there as quick as possible. If you want to set it so it automatically runs, set it on the first position so it's putting in fuel as slow as possible. Now, if you do that, you do have to watch your tank because I have seen at some gas stations, sometimes, not very often, but sometimes you get a pump that won't shut off because it puts the fuel in there so slowly so slowly and so you end up with fuel overflowing so you don't want to do that do not want to do that but put the fuel in there slowly you don't need to top it off um this is an old wives tale that scientifically speaking is correct but in the real world there's no real difference and that's filling up when it is cold outside. Okay, well, <clears throat> the theory behind that is if you have any liquid and you heat it up, it expands. So, well, if you fill up whenever it's cold, that means you can get more gas in there, right? Right? Oh, well, scientifically speaking, yes, you are correct. But how much more gas are you actually going to get in your vehicle? A very 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 small amount i mean we're talking about probably a thimble it's not much guaranteed it's less than a quarter of a cup that's not going to make any difference at all second thing about that is fuel tanks are underground underground the temperature maintains it's it's pretty consistent all day all night that temperature is really really consistent filling up your tank in the morning is not helping anything at all as far as fuel economy goes it's really not <clears throat> the speed that you go at going super slow does not always mean you're gonna get good gas mileage I've had people tell me before, I drive like a grandpa and I still get bad gas mileage. Well, that's why you're getting bad gas mileage, because you're driving like a grandpa. <laughs> In some vehicles, if you lug the motor down by driving so slow, it can get worse fuel economy. Just like I said earlier, as far as accelerating. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time accelerating. You want to get up to speed briskly. Like I said earlier, some vehicles get better gas mileage driving slower. You get a, a big V8, it's probably going to get better fuel economy driving slower. 
you get a, a modern uh, four-cylinder economy car, you might get better gas mileage doing 70 or 75 than you do at 60. Uh, my wife has a Volkswagen Atlas, a 2019 model. It has a turbocharged four-cylinder, eight-speed automatic transmission. I just got 34.2 miles per gallon yesterday. On the highway, driving 70 to 75 miles an hour with doing these things that I'm telling you. Um, <clears throat> that particular car, if I drive 60, it actually gets worse fuel economy. Because once you get up to 70 to 75 in that top gear, the engine RPMs are a little bit higher and it's more towards the peak torque of the motor, which helps to prevent the motor from downshifting. If the motor downshifts, it's going to start getting worse fuel economy. So it's, it's a trade-off. It's a balancing act. <coughs> <coughs> I had a Ram pickup truck with a Hemi. It was four-wheel drive. It got better gas mileage at 60 to 65. Big V8 in a pickup truck. Uh, best fuel economy I got out of it was, uh, I believe it was 25 or 26 miles per gallon. Once again, with doing this stuff. Each vehicle is going to be different as far as the speeds and what it likes. What's going to work, what doesn't work. <clears throat> um, octane. This is always up for debate. Which one's better for fuel economy? High octane or low octane? Once again, it really varies depending on the vehicle. Nine times out of ten, low octane is going to be better. There are some very, very few occasions if you have a high compression motor where that higher octane fuel is going to do better at fuel economy than lower octane fuel. Um, <clears throat> in those cases, the higher octane fuel is going to allow the engine to advance the ignition timing at lower RPM a whole lot more than what it would with a lower octane fuel. And that higher octane fuel is then going to get you better fuel economy. But in most vehicles, that's not the case. Some very few vehicles, it is the case. But once again, that really varies from vehicle to vehicle. I wish, I wish it wasn't, but it's just the way it is. The last thing, and I'm sorry this is a really long video, is make sure your vehicle is in good running condition. Check your tire pressure. Uh, do not go over the recommended inflation pressures on the sidewall of the tires. Um, the manufacturer's recommended pressures are typically there as a good balance between ride quality, tire life, fuel economy, and stability. Sometimes you can go a little bit higher. Needy puppy dog here. <laughs> Sometimes you can go a little bit higher on fuel economy, on uh, tire pressure, and you do gain a little bit of fuel economy. Uh, but sometimes when you do that, you also run the risk of uh, decreasing the tread depth in the center of the tires. Um, usually you can go two, three, four PSI over what is recommended and be perfectly fine, but once again, check the tires to make sure you're not going over the recommended tire pressure that the tire is rated at. You don't want to do that. That's not good. <clears throat> so, sorry for the long video. I hope this helps. Um, I, like I say, I've done this for over 20 years, and these are the things that I have learned. Um, tr please try some of this stuff out now before gas prices get extremely crazy. That way, once gas prices do get crazy, 
you're going to be okay. You are already going to know what you need to do. Ain't that right? <laughs> so, this dog wants my attention. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Y'all have a good day.